here to celebrate mothers. And Sister Virginia said, according to my title, letting the chicks out of the hen house. She says, I'd like to find out exactly what you're talking about. <clears throat> First of all, I would like to express our thanks to God for giving us mothers. They're not perfect, but they're God-ordained. Uh, so at this time, I would like to ask all of our mothers to please stand up. You can leave now and go into the... I'm joking. <clears throat> Thank you. You didn't become mothers because you went to school to be mothers. You didn't apply for a job to become a mother. You weren't hired to become a mother because God gave to you a special gift. Men cannot have babies. Unfortunately, some people believe otherwise. But uh, God used you to perform great miracles. So every child that is born is from a miracle mother. That's the way I see that. And God doesn't make mistakes when giving children to their mothers. So I hope that we all are going to appreciate and love our mothers because we don't go through the pain. We don't go through the, well, fathers do from time to time, the, the two o'clock diaper change and whatever it is. And I had mentioned already earlier, mothers make mistakes, fathers make mistakes. And, I, and you know, I think we're in a generation of people looking for people to blame. And I think there needs to be less blame put on parents and more thankfulness put upon parents. We want to blame uh, all kinds of issues and even parents for situations that we're in. It's because of sin that we suffer the way we do. But it's because of God's grace that we have the mothers we do. Uh, God blesses us abundantly. And, and uh, I, I will look at it this way. God, when God created the father and the mother, God gave to women certain attributes and traits that were going to make them special in the parental relationship, just as when God do, does with fathers. So that a mother and a father, both collectively working together, are bringing out the love that God has, but it's divided into two people. But he, that's his love and care for us that we see. Uh, and when I do finish my message in about 45 minutes, I'm joking, uh, I would like to have a time opened up. And I've always believed this. If we want to tell our mothers thank you, let's do it while they're alive. They need to hear those, those times of praise and, and uh, thankfulness. Mothers and fathers spend a good 20 years, and now we're going to get into my uh, message about letting the chicks out of the hen house. Usually in the 20s is the time when parents start to see their children say goodbye because they either get married, they've got a job situation that takes them away, uh, different issues, uh, they just want to be on their own. Uh, and the parents, the mothers and fathers, they have spent years starting with changing diapers, praying with their kids when they get sick. Isn't that amazing? All of us that have had our kids get sick, and you are saying, Lord, Lord, please, Help with our children. Please help them so they're going to get over this sickness. Uh, staying up at nights when they didn't feel well, praying for them, for healing, when they stubbed their toes or they stubbed their hearts, mom and dad were there. Uh, reading them stories when they're little. That, that's, that was an awesome thing. You know what is interesting? Is the first time they hear this story, to see that awe in their eyes as you're telling them Bible stories or other stories, and it's kind of, oh, this is cool, and you're part of that. Or when you come home from a day's work and your kids run out to meet you at the door, and you love that. You love that time. Or when they get up in the morning and you're still trying to get another 20 weeks of sleep, and they come running into your bed to come and say, hi, good morning. These are awesome memories. These are times that we think about. Or... 
when it comes time, to, especially my wife was more doing this than I was, taking them out for their first driving lessons, and you got a few more gray hairs when you got back home. Uh, or I was even thinking, I wrote down here, going to the dreaded dentist. And you're trying to convince them it's not going to hurt so much when they've heard you complain for years about going to a dentist. But inevitably, inevitably the day comes when parents have to release their kids. And I was thinking about, I don't want to make this kind of a... But you know, when you come to that time, it is a bittersweet time. Because you've invested at least 20-some years in your children, and now they're going to leave. And you think about what does a home look like without your children. And then, you know, we talk about empty nest syndrome and stuff like that. Uh, it is tough sometimes. And I know we're preparing for it in our home, and I don't like to think about that. I remember when our kids were 8, 9, and 10 in that age, and I thought, what awesome kids we had. And then I had some dumb person come up, yeah, you wait till they become a teenager, then see what happens. Uh, and that did. Then there were challenges that came. And then, uh, then someone else says, wait till they say goodbye. And I thought, that is a very sobering, somber time. Uh, and I thought, gee, if I get up here and start talking like that, I'm going to get to tears. Uh, but we have to let them go. We have to release them so they take the next step of growing and they can mature, just like God does with us. I was thinking about time, sometimes when you look into biblical heroes, when God said to Abraham, Take your son up there on Mount Moriah, and I want you to sacrifice him. God was releasing Abraham to do something that he wanted him to do so he could mature and grow in his faith. Because Abraham wouldn't have gotten to that place until he sacrificed to God what was most precious to him. And for us as parents, we are willing to do anything for our kids. My, I've been thinking about that times. And you know how that always was. Your kids never smelled bad with their diapers as other kids did. Never, never, never. And I, I was thinking about that. But, you know, let's take a look at two women in the Bible who had to give up their kids earlier than uh, they would have liked to. So let's go to Exodus, the second chapter. We're going to read verses 1 to 9. And you know, I, I'm going to come back to that and I'm going to go and defend parents in our days. I think that the media is giving parents the raw end of the deal today. Parents aren't good enough. Fathers aren't good enough. Mothers aren't good enough. You know, I think God does a good job with many parents these days. And I hope that our kids are going to realize, you know, mom and dad weren't perfect, but we can see God working through them. So... Exodus 2, verses 1 to 9. And there went a man of the house of Levi and took to wife a daughter of Levi. And the woman conceived and bare a son. And, when, and you know, we look at it this. We, we know that when Jesus was born, what an awesome miracle that was. But I believe every birth is a miracle from God. God decides from the very beginning that child. That is a miracle. And to have that baby is a miracle. I know we have mothers who have gone through miscarriages and a lot of other things that have been very hard to bear. But you know, I think God has been there. But I think for every child, for every one of my children, a miracle. And, and to all the mothers who were willing to go through what they went through is, is awesome for me. So she is with a child. And bear a son, and when she saw him that he was a goodly child, she hid him three months. It's kind of descriptive of me too, right? I'm joking. And when she could no, no longer hide him, look at this. She is going to be willing to face Pharaoh's anger because she sees that God's child is important. And that's why I see it. Mothers and fathers are parents to God's children. That's the way I see it. Well, didn't mom and dad have some? Yes, but I believe God places those children in our hands to raise up. 
So she hid him for three months, and when she could no longer hide him, she took for him an ark of bulrushes and daubed it with slime and with pitch and put the child therein, and she laid it in the, in the flags by the river's brink. You know, it doesn't have dad doing that. It's kind of amazing that he's not involved, but she's doing this. And his sister stood afar off to wit what would be done to him. And the daughter of Pharaoh came down to wash herself at the river, and her maidens walked along by the riverside. And when she saw the ark among the flags, she sent her maid to fetch it. Let's just stop right there. Think of the mother, how heartbreaking this was for her to do. To give up your son, even if you had 10 kids, they're all loved by that mother. And she had to do this. But I think God was the one behind all of this. He is the one who inspired her to get this ark, to put it all, put it in the river and let it go because God had a plan for Moses. But she was willing to do whatever it took to protect that son. And that's, that's an amazing thing. Mothers a lot of times get the bad rap. You know what they do, especially in the age of feminism. Why do you want to give up your career and go do that? You need to be looking out for who's best, and that's after you. Don't worry about having kids. You, you know, that going on. And yet God made children as an awesome gift, and we shouldn't downplay that. The mothers with an awesome gift that they have. Men cannot be mothers. Men do not have the patience mothers do. I think sometimes mothers say, it's time for you to get going to work. Let me look after the kids. Because we're, we're, you know, sometimes you can limit it in patience. So when Pharaoh's daughter opened up the ark, she saw the child, and behold, the babe wept, and she had compassion on him. That's God moving in her. I believe that. And she, and she said, this is one of the Hebrews' children. Then said his sister to Pharaoh's daughter, shall I go and call to you a nurse of the Hebrew women, that she may nurse the child for you? And Pharaoh's daughter said unto her, Go. And the maid went and called the child's mother. And Pharaoh's daughter said unto her, Take this child away and nurse it. You know what's interesting about this? Look at this. She gives up the baby. And I think in a sense, if you want to say, she's giving it up to God. I can't look after this child. I've got to give it up to you. So what happens? Pharaoh's daughter says to Moses' mother, Guess what? I'm going to hire you to be your own baby's babysitter. Isn't that kind of nice? Wouldn't it be nice if we could pay our mothers to do all that, pay, to get the payment for all the work they did for our kids? Someone said they, they're deserving at least $100,000 a year for all the work they do. And I will give you your wages. And the woman took the child and nursed it. And the child grew, and she brought him unto Pharaoh's daughter, and he became her son. And she called his name Moses, she said, because I drew him out of the water. So what I like about this is she was willing to give up her son because she trusted in God that he could do what she couldn't do. But in a point, what I also wanted to per, uh, state was she gave to God what only God was going to be able to do. And when I think of giving our kids up to life, uh, in this world and the, the hardships. And we went through hardships. And we don't want our kids to go through the things we've done, right? We don't want them to have the mistakes. And we tell our kids, don't do this because this is what happened when I did that. We want to protect and raise our children. But you know what? The time comes when you've got to let the chicks out of the hen house. However they're going to run and wherever they're going to go, their decision. You do as much as you can. Jim Elliott made that statement that we all know. He is no fool who gives up what he cannot keep to gain what he cannot lose. And I think that's with our children. We have to give them up because they have decisions to make in their life. But when we give them up to God, God's not going to lose our children. And when we're in prayer and all kinds of things along that line, God can look after our children a whole lot better. And I thought about that one time. When our kids were still little, I thought, I can't protect our kids. I can't be with them every minute of the day. But God can. So instead of trying to trust in my ability or my wife's ability, I'm going to trust God to look after our kids. And I am thankful for that, that He has been faithful to us. And does God call some children home earlier than times than others? Yes, but you know what? 
I believe God loves those kids enough that he's going to take care of that situation. No matter how that looks, God has everything in his hand. So we see a mother giving up the child. Don't you think that Moses' mother wanted to raise him up and to see him go? She had to give him up. And there's another uh, uh, instance of that. Let's go to 1 Samuel 1, verses 19 to 28. I am thankful that even though it's hard to give your kids up, I am thankful that we can put them in the hands of a God who doesn't make mistakes. I'm glad we said amen to that. 1 Samuel 1, and this is speaking, of course, about Hannah, who is, gonna, who is the mother of Samuel. And we're going to see here that she gives him up, but God blesses her for doing so. And they rose up in the morning, this is Hannah and Elkanah, and worshipped before the Lord and returned and came to their house, to Ramah. And Elkanah knew Hannah, his wife, and the Lord remembered her. Wherefore it came to pass, when the time was come about, after Hannah had conceived, that she bare a son and called his name Samuel, saying, Behold, because I asked him of the Lord. And the man Elkanah and all of his house went up to offer unto the Lord the yearly sacrifice and his vow. But Hannah went not up, for she said unto her husband, I will not go up until the child be weaned, and then I will bring him that he may appear before the Lord, and there abide forever. She has already decided in her heart she's not going to have Samuel as long as she'd like to have him. But she's willing to give him up to the Lord, right? And the man of Cana, and oh, I'm sorry, uh, let's go to verse 23. And Elkanah, her husband, said unto her, Do what seems good unto you. Tarry until you have weaned him. Only the Lord established his word. So the woman abode and gave her son suck until she weaned him. And when she had weaned him, she took him up. Now we're coming to the point she has to, she has to give up her son. And my, that is hard. You can just think of what she was going through. And when she went, she took him up with her with the three bullocks and with one ephah of flour and a bottle of wine and brought him unto the house of the Lord in Shiloh. And the child was young. And they slew a bullock and brought the child to Eli. And she said, O my Lord, as your soul lives, my Lord, I am the woman that stood before you here praying unto the Lord. Now here we go. For this child I prayed, and the Lord has given me my petition that I asked of him. Therefore have I lent him to the Lord as long as he lives. He shall be lent to the Lord, and he worshipped the Lord there. She was willing to do something that she couldn't do by giving her son to God. But you know what's interesting? When she gave up her son, she had five kids later on. And I think God blessed her because he was willing. So brethren, what, what are you coming about with all this kind of stuff here? We need to give our kids up to God. We need to prepare them as the best we can spiritually. Uh, we know that our kids get a lot of, of uh, advice, worldly advice that is wrong, that we have to fight with, that we must mess with. Uh, you know, like some kids will come and say to the parents, why can they do this and we can't do that? We've got to protect our kids. We've got to pray for them. Even when they leave the house, we're in prayer for our children. And I believe on Judgment Day, mothers and fathers are going to receive special blessings from God. You looked after, what will you say? My children. Because they're His first. And then they become ours. Uh, we need to recognize that mothers are a covering for their children. This is what we see from Jochebed, Moses' mother, and from Hannah. They were protecting their children. They were looking after them. They would intercede upon uh, God for their children. And how many mothers do that still today? Their children may be moved out and they're still praying protection, mercy and grace upon their children. Children are this morning, uh, I want all of our children to be able to tell your mothers on Mother's Day how special they are. We don't have to wait until they are in a coffin for us to say, wow, did I have a... I want us to do it now. They deserve that praise now. And we're told in scriptures that we're supposed to praise mother and father. We're supposed to honor them. Well, I'm going to close with Psalm 128. 
and then I'd like to open up that microphone for people who would like to say a few words. Psalm 128. And Lord, help us that we can raise up godly children. Blessed is everyone that fears the Lord, that walks in his ways. Blessed. I like that blessing. If we fear the Lord, look what happens. For you shall eat the labor of your hands. Happy shall you be, and it shall be well with you. The wife, thy wife shall be as a fruitful vine by the sides of your house. Your children, like olive plants round about thy table, Behold, that thus shall the man be blessed that fears the Lord. How does the Lord bless the man of God? With a wife and with children. The Lord bless thee out of Zion, and thou shalt see the good of Jerusalem all the days of thy life. Yea, thou shalt see thy children's children, and peace upon Israel. My wife have not gotten there yet, but I am sure that when grandkids come around, what a blessing that's going to be. You know why that's good? When the kids start to get nasty, my wife and I can say, it's time for us to go home. And uh, then they have that problem to deal with. Uh, the Bible says, honor your father and your mother. What? That your days may be long upon the land. It's a blessing that God will not break. So if we honor our moms and dads, blessings come. And at this time, we're going to celebrate Mother's Day. And then in a, in a few weeks, we're going to celebrate Father's Day. Let's give to our parents that praise they deserve. And of course, for God himself being our Heavenly Father. So at this